Hi, uh, welcome to the tool room. Not really the shop, but um, the reason we're in the tool room today is because I wanted to talk to you about a, a new little project that's come my way. Um, I, I do these videos um, not really too planned. I do research beforehand, but I, I don't really um, spend a lot of time trying to figure out what it is that I'm going to try to pass on or, or plan something special to do that uh, or create a piece of furniture or something that I'm going to make so that I can show that. I, I basically uh, send to you guys the thing that I'm dealing with at the time. If I get in a new tool, I'll do a review of the tool or a video on fixing up the tool. Or if I'm fixing a chair for somebody or something like that, then I'll, I'll just do a video about it. Um, sort of just sharing what I go through in my life. Uh, and, uh, and I don't really look for too many woodworking projects. They just kind of seem to come along. So, um, uh, it's more like they're thrust upon me rather than I'm looking for them. So I'm not a big purveyor of um, plans and things like that. I know a lot of people will look for new projects to practice their woodworking skills with. And that's a great way to do it is to uh, look through other people's plans, see how they did things, and then maybe do the same thing. But um, I'm a little different in that um, I do most of my woodworking because it's something that needs to be done. So... Today I'm working on something a little special, a little different. These are uh, these are Tibetan prayer wheels in front of us here. Here's one and another one, and a, another one that I was just given by a good friend of mine. And um, it's uh, it's missing the handle now. In Tibet, they these the earliest prayer wheels were on buildings, and the wind would turn them. And uh, and inside each wheel is a uh, or the hub of each wheel. Is uh, is a, a prayer, and, and that's that's true in in these. And I can show that to you. Um, this one here, you see, the lid comes off very easily. And uh, but here's here's basically the top of a prayer wheel, and this spins, this turns. Now it's missing the handle for it, but that's the woodworking part that we're going to deal with. But here inside, you see, is a very old prayer in there. And uh, you can probably see some of the writing. I don't know if I can get it in focus for you. I'll give you a picture of it. I, w I was trying something new with the cinematic uh, lens feature of the new iPhone. Now it blurs out the back and it, it really wasn't very good because when I would bring things up to focus on, um, it, it would stay in focus on my face and not on the object. So I've switched back and we're gonna continue the video this way and see how we do it. You know, every time I have some sort of change in these things, it takes a, a learning curve to get up with them and to see what I think works the best for, for these videos. Um, I do them all on my phone and then uh, and then editing and, and I don't have a crew. There's no, so, no, no, no one to hold the phone for me while I do it and bring it in and it'll close the camera bring it in for close-ups and things like that. I just do it on my own. So um, let me start again and take you to the point where I was going to show you some of the pieces of it. Here are two, these two that I, I got from a friend's estate up in New York. And uh, these are quite old and um, really quite beautiful. Here's this carving in the sides here. This is bone and then, uh, and then the handle is bone with this carving in it. Um, you see this one is a face and they're all different because they're all singled out and handmade. This is a uh, brass down here and brass here. And then there's a little ferrule in here of bone. And so that acts like a bearing. Let me put this back together here. And so what they do is they take it and they spin it and they say their prayer. And um, they make their prayers to this as a message to uh, whomever it is that they're praying to. So this is, uh, they're really quite beautiful. I like this sort of thing. Here's the other one. I'll show you the carving on its handle. Um, it's a little different, but it's also another face. A bit more primitive 
And these may have been made for the tourist trade, I don't know. As I say, a friend of mine, his father passed away and this was something that he'd gotten when he was over there. And this one again spins and the little ball at the end of the chain acts as um, a centri it creates a centrifugal force and keeps it going. So it's spinning around as you say your prayers. Um, and these also have inside it the little, it's hollow, and inside there is a leaf of paper there with a prayer on it. So, this is my newest project, and I've got to make a handle for it like those others, similar. Now, I, I don't have a bearing here, and, uh, and the, there has to be a piece of metal that goes up through into this so that this will freely spin on the handle. So I've got to work that out. But what I'm starting with to begin with is the blank for the handle. So this will go up inside this part here and then the handle will start. And I've pretty much drawn the design for the handle that I like on this piece of wood. I'm going to turn it on the lathe, but uh, for now what I've come up with is this design. This will be the end of the handle. I need to uh, move it up just a little bit on here, and so this part here will go up inside that part, and then there'll be the ferrule here, and then, um, or the bearing rather, the ferrule will fit over this. Little bead, little bead, and then this end with a little button on the tip. So that's what this project and this video is going to be mostly about, is the making of this handle to fit this prayer wheel so that it enables it to function properly and do such as this. Hey, welcome to the shop. I'm uh, working on this prayer wheel. These are two that I have from Nepal, older ones, and this is one that I've received that's missing the handle. And um, inside is the scroll and the receptor for the uh, metal rod that goes in here that will allow this to spin. But um, <clears throat> we need to make a new handle and um, need to work out what's necessary down here to allow it to spin. Um, that's a very important part of it. So what I've done is I've got this piece of walnut, and this is what I'm going to make the handle out of. And what I've done is I've transferred the design to a piece of paper so that uh, I won't forget. Because once I round this on the lathe, it'll be cylindrical. This design that I put on here won't exist anymore. So I've just copied it here just so I have a vague remembrance of it. It's not exact at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be because I'll create the form at when I'm on the lathe and decide what I want to do as I go. So... Uh, this is the first step just as a reminder that that will fit out of this piece of wood. So let's get to the lathe. Okay, so we've got the primary setup here ready. And I've put uh, two cross grooves and a hole punched in the end of the piece here. And a hole punched in the end. These with the two crosses here will go to the drive point here. And, um, and that prevents it from spinning on it and then we'll bring this one in to uh, attach there snug it up run this in a little bit just to tighten it up a little bit tighten that and I think we turn down the uh, speed to zero turn the lathe on and we'll bring it up and we're going to just clean this up and make a cylinder. Still got a little flat there. And the way to tell is when this is on, if you put this here, you hear that bumping around. And 
and that means that it's not perfectly blended. Okay, that feels good and round. So now we'll take the pencil, we'll put some marks on here and show what it is that we're gonna cut and how. So this is the direction that we're gonna shoot for. Um, we know that there's a point in here and it's coming in to about here, so we won't want that there. So we move this down this way just a little so that we're gonna avoid that little point. We'll be able to take it off later and uh, we'll put a mark for each of these. So this will be the mark for this little dimple. And then here will be the mark for this bead. And then this bead here. And this bead here. And then this is just sort of a taper down in, so we don't have to worry about that for now. What we're going to do is work on these sides here and getting them close to what we want them to be. So uh, we keep this by us so we'll be able to see it. We can put it right there. And, uh, and that way we'll be able to follow our line as we go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by transferring these in full circles around here so we can see those marks. That's the wide bead. This is the small bead. And then we'll do a taper out to this bead here. And then we'll come down here and this will be a curve down in. And so this whole area can be taken down quite a bit. And this area here we know can be taken down quite a bit. But we have our beads marked, so we'll use the skew and we'll put those in.
So just applying some uh, Minwax finishing wax to this. You see the wire I just cut out of a piece of coat hanger. And, um, and I think that'll be fine. So now I'm just spreading that wax around, filling everything. And uh, it's looking good. I like the end. I think that turned out well. Trimmed it with a knife after I took it off the lathe. I just sort of carved that little end with a small little carving knife. And I'm not going to worry about there being too much wax up here because I, I think it'll just aid it. So now here's the top. And I just had to measure up to figure out where to put it and uh, seek out that center hole so that it's correct. And so there it is. I think it looks good. So I'm pretty happy with it. So let's get it to work. So, you know, I have to say, I think it came out very well, and and it turns out that all I needed was a little bushing up inside there, and I didn't need to do that uh, piece at the bottom. Um, so it's it's working really well. Uh, now on that wire that I put in there, that piece of the coat hanger, I ran it. I I drilled a hole down in here, so it's about two inches into this, and then the part sticking out, and that just made that a little stronger, I think. Um, it worked pretty well, but I'm happy how it turned out. And, uh, I'm sure my friend who gave it to me will be, uh, knowing that it's been, uh, given a new life and, uh, I like the wood. It's, it's, it came out really well. Hey, thanks for joining me on this. And, uh, I hope you'll join me again. And, uh, until then next project that comes along, uh, stay safe and, uh, stay kind. Talk to you later. Bye.